everyone, Tim Schofield here. It's time to take a look at the latest Chromebook from Google themselves, the Pixelbook. And I've been using this for a while now, actually been forcing myself to use it over maybe a MacBook or a Windows laptop. Yes, of course I do it on my desktop, but I still have been using this as my main laptop, bringing it with me on trips, going to the coffee shop, doing work on it as well. So I have tons of hands-on time with this. And before I get into the review, I want to talk about the specific model that I've been using, just so you know. I bought the base model, so the $1,000 Core i5, uh, which is 7th gen Intel processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and the 128 gigabyte SSD. To begin, I'd like to start with design, and the Pixel Book is a very mobile laptop. Uh, it takes design notes from the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL with that signature two-tone coloring, as you can see. Now, the Pixel Book is very thin and light as well, so extremely mobile very easy to carry around in a backpack. Very limited ports, unfortunately. You'll see on the side here, you have a USB Type-C slot. Flipping it over on the other side, a USB Type-C slot and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And that is all. There's two LED indicator lights, uh, so you can actually charge it on both sides, which is a nice feature depending on what side you need the power brick to be on. I'm extremely impressed with how premium this laptop looks and feels. Just overall, it was. it's a very well-designed laptop. It's very consistent. You see the two-tone white coloring, two-tone white coloring with the keyboard and the trackpad, and the two-tone white coloring being consistent on the bottom as well. On the bottom of the laptop, you do have a couple grips to raise it off your desk and also help it from not sliding off. This isn't the reflective two-tone. This is actually a grip to it, which is mirrored on this side with the trackpad. This is very soft. Uh, you can't really press on it, but it is a soft touch and grip, which is, makes it very, very comfortable to type when you rest your wrists on it. There are dual speakers on the Pixelbook, and the sound emits right out of these two sides. So when you're using it in laptop mode, it's great. However, if you're using it in tablet mode, the sound kind of goes away from you. So it just kind of depends on the mode you use it, where it's great. Obviously, you can't get uh, both of them to uh, face you, you no matter what you're gonna have to give a compromise So I'd actually prefer them facing me when I have it in laptop mode because that's mostly when I will listen to music Now with that being said the speakers are just average. They're really not that great since it's so small and thin uh, You, you kind of sacrifice on sound performance it gets a little tinny when you turn it up all the way So here it is all the way up which is it does get fairly loud, which I'm happy about It's just the quality gets a little tinny Especially when things, uh, you get uh, high points in, sound, in songs. There is a glass trackpad, which is a little bit small. However, this is a smaller laptop, so that is expected. It is very precise when using it in the Chrome browser. Occasionally, it won't work while in some apps. I'll talk about that in just a second when I get to the Chrome OS. Pixelbook has a few gestures you can use on the trackpad. You can go ahead and swipe up with three fingers, open up all the different apps that you already have open. You see I have a bunch open at once, so you can quickly multitask between those. Uh, when you're actually in the Chrome browser, you can use three fingers and swipe on the trackpad to quickly swap between uh, tabs. And you'll see it has a bit of an indicator. You can really go fast if you'd like to. And it is precise. There's a little bit of a reflection on the tabs. I don't know if you can really tell, uh, but it goes over and you can tell where you're about to switch tabs to. Now, next up is that keyboard. And I'm gonna be completely honest, this is one of the best keyboards I've ever used on any laptop. It is so comfortable to type on, whether it be from resting your wrists on these pads or just how soft to touch they are. Now the keyboard only has a 0.8 millimeter travel. However, it gives some really great feedback uh, and it's just like I said, very soft to touch towards the top. The keyboard's also backlit, so it's very easy to see in the dark. I have no troubles finding the specific keys I need. There's a couple different buttons on the keyboard. You'll notice instead of caps lock, it has a home launcher button, which will bring up your, uh, your launcher where you can go ahead and start searching, gives you some suggested apps, or this arrow will bring you up to all of your apps. You also notice a Google Assistant button. If you tap on that, it will activate the Google Assistant right in the corner here where you can type a question, type something, or you can just go ahead and press the microphone and start talking. So if I said, what's the weather like right now? You'll notice Google Assistant gives you some voice uh, response and then it will tell you what the weather is like. And the keys are not cramped. I don't find myself accidentally hitting keys by any means. Now for a quick sound test, I'll probably bump up the decibels. I'll make note of that.
Overall, I found it's extremely convenient to have the assistant and a dedicated button directly on the laptop, just because I do a lot of Google searching instead of having to hit Control T, open a new tab and do a Google search, I can potentially just say, oh, how to fix my mouse on here. And it will go ahead and feed you back some results. And then if you do wanna open up a tab, you can just go ahead and click on search and it'll open up a new tab and do a Google search for you. Pixel Book has a very nice 12.3 inch, 2400 by 1600 LCD display. And whether I'm watching videos, playing games, Things look really good. I do want to make note of the larger bezels uh, than you're probably used to on the sides here. And that is, of course, makes it easier to hold when you're in tablet mode. Of course, it is a touch screen, uh, but however, it looks a little bit older, uh, older in terms of just larger bezels on old, older laptops compared to other ones out now. If you do own a Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL, it has an instant tethering feature. So if there's no Wi-Fi available, it will automatically detect your Pixel and use the, your phone's uh, LTE connection to connect to the internet. And then finally, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that's the fact that it runs Chrome OS. That's the biggest, uh, almost potential deal breaker for everyone. Uh, you'll see I have a bunch of apps open. If I minimize your home screen, doesn't have any desktop icons. And essentially what you normally do is you just have your Chrome browser open up. So if all you use on a laptop is a Chrome browser, this is definitely the way to go. However, surprise, surprise, it has the Play Store. So you can go ahead and browse any of your Play Store apps. Now I wanna talk about uh, some compatibility. I really haven't had any compatibility issues. Any app that I've installed runs just fine. If I open up Instagram, for example, you'll see it will open up. Uh, it looks like it is struggling to open up. It's actually the first time I've had that, but let me just close out of it, reopen it, there we go. And I wanna make note, you can't use your trackpad while in the app uh, in terms of scrolling. You can click just fine, but if you wanna scroll in the app, you have to use your finger. If you wanna go full screen in the app, you can. However, you have to restart it every time. So it's just a bit of a pain. It reboots the entire app. You lose all your progress. Uh, you can minimize it again, but again, you have to restart the complete app. It's nice to have Instagram because I can download pictures from Google Photos, and then I can actually post them straight from my hard drive that's on my Chromebook. In terms of performance, the Pixelbook is extremely quick. Uh, I find that I have a bunch of tabs open and can still open other apps. You see I have Microsoft Word here, which is the app. And you see, this is just a, a test document that I already have loaded up. But uh, the app works very well, it's, it's quick. Uh, if I wanna swap between this, I have an Excel spreadsheet open, uh, which gives it more desktop functionality because it has the Play Store. So any app you can install from the Play Store, Evernote, Adobe Illustrator, you can install onto your Pixelbook. Side note, you can uh, open up Snapchat, but the only way they really have the camera oriented the right way is to actually flip it into tablet mode and use it that way. That's the only way you can do it. So let's take a picture and you'll see it just zooms in. Uh, so Snapchat's not too functional either on the Pixelbook if you're planning on using it. Now the Twitter app works well. I can go over to my notifications or my feed. However, I'd rather just use the desktop website. So most of the apps, uh, aside from maybe Microsoft Word, I have a Discord app as well. Uh, feel free to join the Discord if you use it. I'll link to it down below. However, I find that I just generally have a lot of tabs open usually about eight tabs at a time. And performance is great. It's extremely quick, handles everything with ease, has a 720p camera up at the top at 60 frames a second, which is solid, does a trick for any web chatting that you wanna do. Casting tabs works flawlessly and you could still use your laptop while you cast it. It doesn't necessarily overheat at any point. It gets a little warm occasionally if you're casting, opening a lot of tabs, opening a lot of apps. Playing games on the Pixelbook is pretty similar to how it is when you play on a tablet. Uh, I find that when you, use, when you do play games, you're definitely going to wanna use it in tablet mode as opposed to with your keyboard and mouse. And overall, unless the game is kind of uh, optimized for tablets. It's really gonna be on a smaller screen looking like a phone. And for me, when I play mobile games, I generally just play them on my phone. I don't necessarily need to play them on my laptop. If I'm gonna play games on a laptop, I'd rather it be uh, a heavier game such as uh, I don't know, just more graphics intensive and not necessarily games I can find in the Play Store. Also worth noting while using it in tablet mode, you do have volume rockers here, so you can turn it down and up on the fly. And of course there's that power button on the left. You'll see here, I'm playing a game. If I swipe up, I can get to back to my uh, other apps I have open and quickly swap between them. 
and you'll see just how fluid and fast it actually is to swap between these. Let's say I want to go ahead and go into do a calculation. You'll see uh, I have a ton of things open and you'll saw it's just a little jittery when I open up the app drawer, but that's about the only time I see frame rates truly dropping. Let's open up the calculator. That was very smooth and fluid. Do a quick calculation equals that. And then let's go ahead and go back to the Play Store, go back to our game. And of course, RAM management's just fine. It's great, you have eight gigs of RAM, so, and a light Chrome OS. So overall, in terms of performance, it's fantastic. And of course, you have a ton of games to choose from in the Play Store. Now, yes, you do have the full Play Store at your fingertips, but I find that when I wanna use one of my mobile applications, what I'll do is I'll just grab my phone. So there's definitely certain use cases for a Chromebook versus a phone, but uh, the, the Play Store only gets you so far. Uh, most of the time I'm going on websites as opposed to apps, for example, Twitter, YouTube even, I'll go to the YouTube website as opposed to using the YouTube app. Gmail, I go to the website. Facebook, I go to the website. Uh, so as you can see, apps only can take you so far on your Chromebook. And in terms of battery life, Google says that you get about 10 hours uh, total. And for me, I haven't quite hit that. I get about eight or nine. So it does get me through a full day, which is great. Uh, so very good battery life, I would say. Uh, and overall, just wanna give some final thoughts. Of course, it's extremely portable, light, the design is fantastic. Great work, Google. The keyboard's great. Uh, performance is great, but it runs Chrome OS, and that's the one downside. So for me, $1,000 for a Chromebook is just a little bit too high. Uh, the, the OS just isn't as feature-rich as opposed to Mac OS or Windows, and just development for it isn't quite there yet. They just need to somehow get developers on there to optimize their apps for Chromebooks, which just hasn't happened. So overall, I do love the Pixelbook. Don't get me wrong, it fits most of my needs. Uh, it's just too much. I, I, I can't justify spending this much on a Chromebook. So overall, I love the laptop, just a little bit overpriced for me. So hopefully you enjoyed the review. Be sure to drop a comment, be sure to click that thumbs up and subscribe. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching.